This article is about the Roman Emperor. For the other meanings of Avatus, see Avatus. Avatus was Western Roman Emperor from 8 or the 9th of July 455 to the 17th of October 456. He was a senator and a high-ranking officer both in the civil and military administration, as well as Bishop of Piacenza, a Gallo-Roman aristocrat. He opposed the reduction of the Western Roman Empire to Italy alone, both politically and from an administrative point of view. For this reason, as emperor he introduced several Gallic senators in the imperial administration. This policy, however, was opposed by the senatorial aristocracy and by the people of Rome, who had suffered from the sack of the city by the Vandals in 455. Avatus had a good relationship with the Visigoths, in particular with their king Theodoric II, who was a friend of his and who acclaimed Avatus emperor. The possibility of a strong and useful alliance between the Visigoths and Romans ended, however, when Theodoric invaded Roman Hispania and then refused to help Avatus against the rebel Roman generals who deposed him. Biography Origins and early career Avatus was born in Clermont to a family of the Gallo-Roman nobility. His father was possibly Flavius Julius Agricola, consul in 421. Avatus had two sons, Agricola and Ectasius Avatus and a daughter, Papianilla. She married Sidonius Apollinarish, whose letters and panegyrics remain an important source for Avatus' a life and times. Avatus followed a course of study typical for a young man of his rank, including law. Before 421 he was sent to the powerful Patricius Flavius Constantius to ask for a tax reduction for his own country. This embassy was successful. His relative Theodorus was hostage at the court of the king of Visigoths, Theodoric I. In 425-426 Savatus went and met to him and the king, who let Avatus enter his own court. Here, around 439, Avatus met the son of Theodoric, Theodoric II, who later became king. Avatus inspired the young Theodoric to study Latin poets. He then started a military career serving under the Magister Militu Metius in his campaign against the Juthungi and the Norics and against the Burgundians. In 437, after being elevated to the rank of a illustrious, he returned to Avernia, where he held a high office, probably Magister Militum Pagalius. In the same year he defeated a group of Hunnic raiders near Clermont and obliged Theodoric to lift the siege of Narbonne. In 439 he became Praetorian Prefect of Gaul and renewed the friendship treaty with the Visigoths. Before the summer of 440, he retired to private life at his estate, Aviticum, near Clermont. Here he lived until 451 where the Huns, led by Attila, invaded the Western Roman Empire. Avatus persuaded Theodoric into an alliance with Rome, and the combined forces of Theodoric and Aetius defeated Attila in the Battle of Chalons. Theodoric died in the battle, rise to the throne in the late spring of 455. Avatus was recalled to service by Emperor Petronius Maximus and was elevated to the rank of magician. Mr. Militum, probably Prizentalis, Maximus sent Avatus in an embassy to the court of Theodoric II, who had succeeded to his father, at Toulouse. This embassy probably confirmed to the new king and his people the condition of Foderati of the empire and asked for their support for the new emperor. While Avatus was at Theodoric's court, news came of the death of Petronius Maximus and of the sack of Rome by the Vandals of Geyseric. Theodoric acclaimed Avatus emperor in Toulouse. On 9 July, the new emperor was acclaimed by the Gallic chiefs gathered in Vienna, near Aralate, and later, around 5 August, before Avatus reached Rome, he received the recognition of the Roman Senate. Avatus stayed in Gaul for three months, to consolidate his power in the region that was the centre of his support and later went to Italy with a Gallic army, probably reinforced with a Gothic force. 
He probably traveled to Noricum to restore the imperial authority in that province, and then passed through Ravenna, where he left a Gothic force under the new Patricius and Magister Militum Remittus, a Visigoth. On 21 September, finally, he entered Rome. Consolidation of power The effective power of Avatus depended on the support of all the major players in the Western Roman Empire in the mid-5th century. The new emperor needed the support of both the civil institutions, the Roman Senate and the Eastern Roman Emperor Martian, as well as that of the army and its commanders and the Vandals of Geyseric. On 1 January 456, Avatus took the consulate, as traditionally the emperors held the consulate in the first year upon assuming the purple. However, his consulate sign Collega was not recognized by the Eastern Court, which nominated two consuls, Iohannes and Varanes. The fact that the two courts did not agree on a couple of consuls but each nominated its own means that despite the efforts of Avatus to receive the recognition of the Eastern Emperor, the relationship between the two halves of the empire was not optimal. Foreign policy treaties under Martian and a treaty of 442 between Emperor Valentinian III and the Vandal King Geyseric had failed to reduce Vandal incursions and raids along the Italian coast. Avitus' own efforts secured a temporary winter truce with them, but in March 456, Vandals destroyed Capua. Avitus sent Rissima to defend Sicily, and the Romans defeated the Vandals twice once in a land battle near Agrigento and another in a naval battle off Corsica. During the reign of Avatus, the Visigoths expanded into Hispania, nominally under Roman authorization but actually in their own interests. In 455 Avatus had sent an ambassador, Comes Fronta, to the Subi and then to Theodoric II to ask them to formally recognize Roman rule. When the Subi invaded the Roman province of Hispania Tarraconensis, the Visigoths attacked and defeated on 5 October 456 at the Campus Baramis. 12 miles from Astorga, on the banks of the Orbigo, subsequently occupying the province's nominal foderati of the empire. Fall in the meantime, resentment amongst the population of Italy against the foreigner Avatus grew. The Gallo-Roman emperor had given to other members of the Gallo-Roman aristocracy many key offices of the public administration usually filled by Romans. Furthermore, the population of Rome, devastated by the sack of Rome, suffered from food shortages due to the Vandal control of the naval routes. Aggravated by the requirements of the foreign troops that had arrived with Avatus, the imperial treasury was almost empty and, after disbanding his Visigoth guard because of popular pressure, Avatus was obliged to pay their huge wages by melting down and selling the bronze of some statues. Counting on the popular discontent, on the disbandment of the Imperial Guard, and on the prestige gained through their victories, Rissima and the Cums Domesticorum Majoran rebelled against Avatus. The Emperor was obliged to leave Rome in early autumn and to move north. Rissima had the Roman Senate depose Avatus and ordered the murder of the Magister Militum Remittus in the Palatium at Class ancient port of Ravenna, on 17 September 456, Avatus decided to react. First he chose Messianus, one of his collaborators in his embassy to the Visigoths ordered by Patronius Maximus, as the new Magister Militum, then he probably went to Gaul to collect all the available forces. Probably the Visigoth guard he had just disbanded, finally he led his forces against the troops of Rislamas near Piacenza. The emperor and his army entered the city and attacked the huge army led by Rissimus, but after a great massacre of his men, including Messianus, Avatus fled on 17 or 18 October 456. In the immediate aftermath Rissimus spared his life, but forced him to become bishop of Piacenza. Death Avatus a Gallic supporters may still have recognized him as emperor, despite his deposition. Sidonius Apollinaris tells of a failed coup d'acute TAT in Gaul organized by one Marcellus and probably aimed at bringing Avatus back on the throne. The contemporary historian Hydatius, who lived in Spain, 
considered the year 457 the third of Avatissa reign, Avatissa own intentions are not known, nor are the manner and date of his death, of which there are several versions. In some, he was told that the Roman Senate had condemned him to death, and tried to flee to Gaul, officially traveling there to bring donations to the Basilica of St. Julian in Avernia, his homeland, according to Gregory of Tours. He died during this journey. Other sources have him strangled or stuffed to death, by order of his successor. Avatus died in 457, or late in 456, very soon after his deposition, and was buried at Briauda, next to St. Julian's tomb. Bibliography Primary sources Major source for Avatus' life until his rise to the throne is the panegyric written in occasion of his consulate by Sidonius Apollinarish. Sidonius Apollinarish, panegyric for Avatus. For the history of his reign, the major sources are the Spaniard historian Hydatius and the Byzantine chronicler John of Antioch. Hydatius, Chronicle, John of Antioch, Chronicle. Secondary sources Jones, Arnold Hugh Martin, John Robert Martindale, John Morris, Eparchius Avatus V, Prosopography of the Later Roman Empire. Volume 2, Cambridge University Press, 1992, ISBN 0-521-20159-4, pp. 196-198. Matheson, Ralph W. Avatus, Der Imperatoribus Romanis. Randers Pearson, Justine Davis. Barbarians and Romans. The Birth Struggle of Europe, A.D. 400-700, Norman University of Oklahoma Press, 1983, p. 251.